face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? And welcome, of course, to the Small God Tier Change 2017 in August. Hey, that was a weird intro. Let's not do that again. Anyway, this moment Tier Changes here uh, has been out for a few days and I didn't want to tackle it till actually today because I was waiting for something to happen and that was, well, a bad that transpired. I really wanted to tackle this list after that transpired because I felt that I was going to be very speculative of something that definitely wasn't sticking. So with that in mind, I'm glad I waited a few days. Um, outside of that, the tier change this time is not that big and it has a lot to do with that since NU and PU are still in these beta phases, they are not affected by the usage that coming from Smogon. Um, they should not be until they actually are finalized. So with that in mind, the changes we're going to see are from OU to UU, UU to RU, which is both a good and a bad thing, which will, will mean that there are not a lot of moving, but also will mean that the Pokemon that are statuarized here are statuarized in that tier alone. So with that said, let's go record the list itself. And since I'm naturally lazy, I'm actually gonna go over the Pokemon list by list, basically. Um, so we're gonna start with Bayonet. Uh, the Mega Bayonet is actually going from OU to UU. I don't believe anyone was surprised by that. Bayonet was RU last generation. It might very well fall there too, but it should definitely be said that Bayonet got better this generation with, of course, the Prankster being activated turn one. It's an ability that does make its viability slightly stronger, you know, the, the Prankster Destiny Bonds. And of course, with Gunk Shot in mind, it could deal with the fairies in UU. I don't believe it's a bad Pokemon in UU whatsoever, is whether or not it's used that often. Um, one thing should definitely be said though, with Gengar gone, Bayonet might actually be, a, you know, the Pokemon of choice, as, as stated here, due to Gunk Shot. It does have a very good combination to deal with threats. It isn't necessarily that slow, 75 base speed means it can deal with a lot of slower threats, such of course Primarina who is a Pokemon that definitely are dominating that tier, and consider how the tier changed in UU quite a lot here, um, it definitely should be stated that this function might work very well. It also has a superb Trick Room setter with Prankster in mind, making it a neutral Trick Room speeder, so that's that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, next change here, Agron to um, actually go in from OU to UU. Same thing here, I don't believe Ar Agron is a, is a bad Pokemon in uh, OU at all. I think it deals well with uh, the Tapus there, and it actually is a Pokemon that stands out. Sadly, there are a lot of threats there, Lando is definitely one of them. Uh, but just overall, Agron has a rough time as a Steel type alone, Celesteela, Skarmory, superb Steel Pokemon overall, so it, it has a rough time. In, in Yu-Yu though, it might find some good usage, while Mega Steel is here too. Um, they're both doing the same type of role, I do believe Agron is... Um, better to some extent with of course its uh, ability filter to be able to take hits better but at the same time it just like the ground type uh, which is something that um, steelix is doing really well circuitry is a very big threat now and it was before but it's bigger now uh, steelix is probably the only possible response to it to be completely honest so um i think the day circuitry is banned or move up to ou again is the day that agron will actually be deemed better than mega steelix in the tier but Agron is not going to move lower than UU, that's for sure. It's still a very, very good Steel type, and it's actually one of those Steel types that, you know, it, it deals with the fences that are there and can deal well with them. So in a bulkier team, Agron is a very, very good Pokemon to have there. Um, next Pokemon follow-up is actually Scolipede moving from OU to UU, and I believe it's going to stay UU this generation, and it's mainly because of the Baton Pass uh, ban here, basically. Scolipede's viability got shifted and got shifted quite a lot due to it. Scolipede on its own is not a bad Pokemon. It's a very high base attack, or not very high, but it is, it is high, 100, and you know, a solid speed here to get it with a good combination with you know, Bug and Poison. To get it with a speed boost, which clearly is helping it off quite a lot with Nuggle Earthquake, Alcatel, stuff like that. Um, it's still viable. The question is whether or not, um, due to, of course, the nerf itself, if Beedrill is not a more a Pokemon more desirable than Scolipede, and you know, that's something the timers will tell themselves. Uh, I don't believe, as long as Gliscor in the tier, that Scolipede is going to triumph for anything, because Scolipede does have a rough time versus the Gliscor. The only way I find a way around it, and I don't necessarily mean this is going to work, because it won't, but it's full stance, you know, and Water MC, basically Hydro Vortex, uh, with Aqua Tail in mind. That's, that's probably the only way you're going to attack like Gliscor. Uh, you solve that, you, 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 you're you fine, basically, in that tier, but I mean, I can only speculate with that. Uh, Gliscor is one of the best Pokemon in UU at the moment. 
and uh, it's gonna remain that. It, it, there's no no thing that really are necessarily shaking it. So uh, Scolipede moving down is could be interesting at least because it's a very strong offensive threat. It is whether or not it is offensive enough to be a threat there. But it's definitely gonna stay you. I don't believe it can go RU. It's too good for that. Uh, Salamence moved from OU to UU. It did not. It actually is a Beal Pokemon, so it's banned from UU. But Salamence uses have dropped. Um, the the Flyum C set with Moxie, uh, while still viable uh, in, in a very good way, I think I stated this before, it's one of the best um, C move users in the game, but it takes a C, C place basically. So you have to really design your team with the thought set of whether or not you want to have a Focus Blast, you know, a Flyum C mind to land, or a Salamence with a Flyum C Moxie speed boost uh, or Dragon Dance set. And I think I'm not it. Salamence, I said, just as viable. There, there is nothing wrong with Salamence, but. Offering a C-Move user is one of those things, you know, there are other C-Move users that are just as good, if not even better, or more reliable, that therefore are used to that extent, which means the Salmon sadly gets the short end of that and becomes not, not used at all, because without a C-Stone or a C-Crystal, it is subpar to Dragonite, basically, which means that it's just not that more interesting to use. Um, Tornadoes from BL to UU, I mean, same thing here, it definitely stands out as, you know, the Pokemon gets banned from a different zero and actually move up from the other ones. That stands for that, you know, the Smogon console really knew what they were talking about and the viability of this Pokemon really are shining and Tornadoes was one of them that definitely was a great brain setter in UU. So it might very well drop again, actually, sadly, <laughs> due to some other changes. Um, but yeah, Tornadoes, it, it's always been good. Um, Having a Salt Lion type might hang in it somewhat, but uh, I mean, Hurricane, um, Tailwind, Hearing Dance, it's what it does. It's a really nothing to it. It works exactly the same as previous generation. The only perk we have here is, you know, the Fly MC Crystal here, which, you know, that spam the Hurricane. At least land once. You know, that's always nice. Uh, Porygon 2, moving from BL to RU. Nothing really surprising there. Porygon 2 is an excellent Pokemon. It's a decent check for a lot of things. It even deals well with Dual Blade, which is still in that tier. And uh, now it's Heracross, possibly gone, if it's not even he's gone. And uh, he's definitely not, he's gonna leave RU for sure, much like Kogelder did in UU. Um, Heracross doesn't have necessarily that many, or I mean, Porygon doesn't have that many issues anymore. Uh, sure, Sock could work to some extent, and I do believe there are fighting types there that are interesting, so Toxicroak. But Heracross was one of those Pokemon that's just like, mm, no, bad duck. But <laughs> with him gone, things could get tougher. Uh, I definitely see Machomp moving up too, actually, as we keep on going here from, of course, to next time in November. Uh, mainly because it's probably the only thing now that probably deals with it head on and have special defense enough to solve that issue. Uh, but that's only speculation, as always. Uh, Halucha, BL2 to you. I think I said this before uh, about Halucha. Halucha is one of those Pokemon that, due to Unburden, can eradicate teams easily if they want sports stands. There are no good checks for it and I don't believe that you know in UU you with Mega Steelix and now of course Mega Agron that they all saw that high jump kick pushes them back. Uh Zaolucha could very well be banned from UU eventually too. His viability are up in OU uh, with the seeds in mind, the electric seed and stuff like that with Koku, this Pokemon become extremely dangerous. Uh, I do believe the stronger nation how Lucha is in OU and not in UU due to of course how the terrain works and what Pokemon are with the terrain in mind. That said Nothing to it. Halucha clearly are was too strong for RU. It had to go, and it's being showcased here. It works in UU, so that's great. Obama Snow, Mega Obama Snow, that is. OU to UU. I don't know. I mean, Obama Snow is kind of like Lustring in so many ways, and I do believe Alolan Nine Tails is now the superb setter. So you don't use Obama Snow for um, for the hail anymore. Um, so on that note, I do believe we can move even further down. That said, Obama Snow, the mega form here, is very, very strong with Ice Shot in mind. You know, it can be a mixed sweeper and doing that really well. Um, but I think it's hard to use in uh, the meta that are in UU at the moment, but what the hell I know. <laughs> but that's really all I can say. I think Obama Snow is a good Pokemon, but I think the environment that it's going to face now is just as tough really as it was previously. Uh, Manaphy, uh, OU to UU, and it got banned yesterday. Um, I said this on Twitter basically that you know it's it's gonna like max a week. Is <laughs> it's not gonna stick. Manifest viability are one of the best in UU while or in OU. While there are decent checks for it in OU, there are definitely none nothing of that in UU. 
So, I mean, the only thing I think about this the next coming book when here is going to be so cute. Um, it, it's not a check. It's basically one that can take a hit and die next turn. So, I'm really glad it went the way uh, that the console really saw, you know, that that's, that, that's not going to work. <laughs> so, um, this is one of those changes that it's so big in so many ways. So, um, one really has to take it with absolute... Um, carefulness basically to see whether or not it works and I think the OU console base was like oh, no that's not gonna work UU is not ready for this can't deal with it and uh, that it had to go so best 10 hours of Manaphy's life I think uh, Sukun from BL to UU same thing here Sukun is as viable as the most previous generation it hasn't changed at all Krokun is freaking bitch <laughs> so yeah I think it's fair I think it's very fair that Suki moved up. Um, it's like I said, its viability are just as good. Yeah, Pelipper moved from OU to UU. It has a lot to do with another Pokemon, but Pelipper is a more desirable Drizzler. Uh, that is what it's coming down to, basically. So I think it's very fair. Uh, Pelipper's viability in UU is non-existent because of Drizzle is banned there, but in OU with Drizzle in mind. Pelipper is a freaking star. That's definitely it's not a niche. Like Pelipper is the it's the apocalypse <laughs> of a rain team. It is the dominator, the beast, the rooster. You can recover in a U-turn. You no, know, it can do stuff, spam hurricanes. While Pelipper is not that strong, but with this disability one drizzle, it becomes a threat. And with of course environment, there is one switching into Swiss Swimmer. Yeah, it's, it's decent. It's very good. It's a very, very good Pokemon. So, I'm not surprised. Not surprised one bit. Now, we don't have that many Pokemon left to talk about, but we have one that really stands out. There was a camera movement from OU to UU. The reason I say this is because camera actually has been very, very viable in OU. And it was debating whether or not the usage really was that low, or if the release really was affecting it, that it has not had so much usage. It was a three-month span, and it was... Well, kind of newly released. Um, thing is here, Mirror Camera and Trick Room teams are working very nicely here because Magirna is a very, very good Trick Room sweeper. Uh, Mega Camera stands out as one of those Pokemon that necessarily shakes Tabu Koko with really no issues whatsoever. It can one it KO um, Tabu Bulu, and uh, it can actually do a decent amount of damage to uh, Tabu Fini. And just overall, the OU meta is not ready for this combination of stabs. And like I said, the Magirna really makes sense for this Pokemon. So it could actually be moving up again. But in UU, it's not gonna be <laughs> it's not gonna be that viable. Magirna is the bread and butter for Trick Room teams, in my honest opinion. I think it, this is definitely holding it back, but I can definitely see you know what Trick Room team or Uniclass, Porygon 2, um Pangoro, Mega Camera working very well in UU. Uh, so much so that I'm gonna try this myself. But yeah, Mega Camera as stated. Very, very good Pokemon this generation, and it has a lot to do with how it deals with the tough threats this generation. Tapu Koko doesn't stand a chance, and Bulu can't touch it, definitely, but it will sure as hell die by a fire blast. So, Mega Camera, very, very surprisingly, a big new threat in the tier, so don't don't mind that UU definition of it. It's a dangerous threat. Uh, Mega Odino, UU to are you? <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's supposed to. It's a bad Pokemon. I really feel bad for Megaudino because I do believe had it kept this Regenerator, it would have been a bigger threat. At this moment, it's just a worse Fairy type. I mean, it's basically a worse Aromatis or a worse uh, Flodius. It doesn't do the stuff it's supposed to. It it becomes really lacklustering, and I feel bad for it because Megaudino really needed a buff, and when it was introduced, it freaking screwed up. Um, so it's gonna definitely move to as far as I knew. I don't believe even there that it actually could be deemed viable. It's spooky as all hell though, and that's that's a perk for it. But that is as far as it goes. Now the last Pokemon is of course a Pokemon that really is the star of these stats overall. And it has have a big factor <laughs> on a lot of these Pokemon while they've been more or less viable. Mega Swampert moved from UU to OU. Mega Swampert was, as Mega Camera was really, these Pokemon was introduced very close to the tier change in May, which meant that it moved down out of usage alone, but the viability of this Pokemon has, it, it hasn't been affected by that because it is a very dangerous threat. Swift Swim turn 1 means a lot for this Pokemon, being not unspeedy turn 1 means that this turn 1, 
it freaking kills something. This it hits like a tank. It takes hits like a tank, and uh, it has affected the tier quite a lot. Um, definitely, as you guys saw here, with Pelipper moving up to OU has a lot to do with that. It's a freaking setter. You know, you want that setter. Fuck you, Polytoad is basically what I'm trying to say. And the same thing here with Tornadus from um, RU to, or to BL2 to UU. It was the, the supreme range setter. It had the fact that since Swampert was in UU, you needed a superb setter. And the Swampert was your setter. A bit, bit surprised that Kingdra has a moving up too with this in mind. Because it is definitely affecting the same thing here with Manaphy. Manaphy is not that desirable if Swampert is doing the same job but better. Uh, even if it is on the physical side, that's, it has affected Manaphy in that fashion. Um, but outside of that, Swampert is the definition of the threat this generation. And it's going to stand in OU for the rest of this generation. Because it just is that good of a Pokemon. High stab attack, high speed in rain. There aren't many Pokemon that are speeding it that can threaten it. The, thing, the things that do threat it and are able to outspeed it doesn't necessarily kill it. It is one of those really, really dangerous factors whether or not Swampert is actually going to stay even though you is going to keep going up. But I think it's going to stay. Uh, but it's a very dangerous threat in this tier now. So yeah, that is basically all. Now with that said, um, as said before, NU and PU are not saturated at all here. And... Um, I mean, they go and probably to be finished in November when the next change is coming. But I want you to really remember, in <laughs> in November, we of course get Ultra Sun and Moon, which means that the tier change might very well shift completely there too. But even with that said, you know, it's really cool to see um, these tier changes and how they're affecting here. And most of it's definitely going to stay. Uh, is whether or not actually some Pokemon move down even further if you're going to speed that up before Sun and Moon is coming out or Ultra Sun and Moon come around. I really hope they do that. Uh, but as I said it here previously, Rain is going to be not as much used now in UU, but I think Trick Room and Camera might shine a bit through here. And of course, Color P can affect something there, probably. I'm, I'm sure it will. But outside of that, the tiers here, I think, are being completely finished here in the highest tiers, as long as the new moves in Ultra Sun and Moon aren't affecting that too much. Uh, with that said, go as always, thank you for watching. I um, hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was a bit late. As I said there, I didn't want to do this video till I actually knew if Manaphy wasn't going to stay in or not because I felt that that was a bit unsure and um, I, I got the hint from Antar that I should probably not take for granted that Manaphy is going to stay and most likely no it didn't so yeah I felt I felt good that I waited I, I could definitely talk without without speculating too much in UU because it's it's a different feel now with Manaphy gone already uh, so that's it guys thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video till then take care